Hey, what's up guys? As you may know, Cubase 15 just came out and I thought it'd be really fitting to go through some unique aspects of Cubase that I really like and would love to see in other digital audio workstations. These are some unique workflow features that totally just make sense, are forward thinking and just inspirational. Okay, so let's jump in. So the first one has to do with vocals because a lot of the time I'm editing vocals, adjusting the gain within my vocal parts. And because recording vocals is a very dynamic thing, sometimes you want control over those peaks within the amplitude and Cubase makes it super simple to adjust. Okay, so I just have this vocal part that I'm gonna drag directly into Cubase. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit here. So this is the entire vocal part and it sounds like this. I don't wanna fall, I don't wanna fall down, down, down. And I wanna adjust that last part that says down and it's super simple with Cubase. So if I press Z on my keyboard, it automatically zooms into this vocal part. Because I wanna adjust this down part, this last note of the vocal part, it's super simple. Inside Cubase, all you have to press is shift and command and it can automatically detect your vocal blurbs. This is so useful. I wish every single DAW had this. And what you can do once Cubase has detected your vocal blurb is simply drag down on this little diamond at the top here, and it's going to automatically adjust the amplitude or the gain of the individual piece of audio within your vocal part, which is super powerful. And you can see if there's this little square here, that means it's adjusting the gain individually. And then once I let go, you'll see that the amplitude of my vocal blurb now reflects the gain adjustment. And we can do this for any part inside of our vocal part. So if I just hold shift and command again and go to this next part, this one looks a little bit high. I can drag down on the diamond and I can adjust my gain accordingly to fit the rest of my vocal. So it's a super useful hidden tool inside of Cubase that I absolutely love. And I really hope we get to see this in other digital audio workstations in the future. And this is what it sounds like with the adjustments made. I don't want to fall, I don't want to fall down, down, down. It's just more even and it's a great way to adjust your vocal parts. And it's a lot different than using something like a fader to adjust your parts or a vocal leveler because this is actually adjusting your vocal parts on a pre plug in basis, meaning the gain that is staged before it hits any of your effects or vocal plugins. This makes editing vocals lightning fast, super fun, and one of the most efficient ways I've ever seen for adjusting your gain within your vocal parts. And you can do this on anything else too. It's not just vocal parts, it's instrument parts, synth parts, drum hits, you can edit all of your loops using this gain adjustment feature. It's so easy and it instantly just works. Okay, so this next one is a bit of a two-parter. So you may have seen inside Cubase, there's this thing called chord pads and the chord track, but you can actually take loops from your sample library and use them as inspiration for these chord pads because Cubase 15 can analyze your loops for the chordal content, and then you can use the chord track to change out these chord pads. So here's what I'm talking about. I have this guitar loop inside of Cubase, and I'm just gonna show you what it sounds like. A really nice chord pattern with a really nice vibe. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Cubase analyze it for these chords. So what I can do is add a chord track and that's this one right here. I can click add track. I'll just drag it to the top of our project. And now what I'm gonna do is just simply drag this loop to the chord track and Cubase 15 is gonna automatically analyze it for its chords. And within seconds, we have the chords for this loop. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and mute this and go down to the chord pads. And if you don't know how to get to this, it's just shift command C to get to it. And right now it just has these chords. But I wanna take these chords and bring them down into the chord pads. So what we can do is just click here to select all and then delete them out. Click okay. And now we have a clear set of chord pads to add these chords to. Now we can simply just click and drag to select all the chords in the chord track and then drag them down to our chord pads. And immediately we have a whole new set of chord pads to experiment with. And this is what this chord progression sounds like with this current Celeste preset that I have on this track.
super nice and super inspiring because like I said, you can take any loop and have Cubase analyze it for its chords. Now I will say this works better on some material than other material. If you have a really complex synth part, it may be a little more tricky for Cubase to detect what the chord is for each part, but it's something worth experimenting with and a way to get instant inspiration while working on your tracks. Because there's a lot of songs out there that you may find inspiring for their chord changes and progressions. And it's just a great way to take something you already know you love and apply it to your own projects. Okay, so this next one is really cool and it's exclusive to QAs 15 and above. And this is a brand new melodic sequencer. Now in a lot of digital audio workstations, there's many ways to sequence notes, but rarely is there something baked right into the interface like this new melodic sequencer inside of Cubase. So if I just go ahead and select this portion of the track and double click, I get this little pattern event here that when I go to the lower section, you'll see I can choose between drums or melodic. And if I click melodic, we have a sequencer here that's built right into the interface. Now Logic Pro does have something like this, but I find this one is way more organized, intuitive, and just makes sense with how it's set up. So I have this current instance of a factory bass preset called Dark Start, and it sounds like this. Sounds really nice and gritty. And if I wanna go ahead and use the melodic sequencer to create either a melody or a bass part, it's super simple. So I can set my key over here and I'm just gonna leave it on Aeolian Natural Minor and C. And then I have the option between shapes or randomize. And it gives us controls for things like ties, repeats, jumps, and we can adjust this how we want and get different results. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of eyeball this and just come up with something random. And then once I click the dice, we get an instantly randomized pattern on the spot. Let's see what this sounds like. And I'm just gonna go ahead and loop this. It sounds pretty cool. And then we can adjust these orbs. So it sounds pretty good, but if we want to try something else, we can simply just click this plus button and then re-randomize it. So I'll go and click the dice. And then once I go back to the track and click pattern two, we can hear what it sounds like. And we can adjust things like the notes, octave. So if I want to shift this up a couple semitones, or maybe even an octave. Yeah, I love how that one sounds. But there's all these functions and features built into this panel down here. So if you wanna change things like a density, I'm gonna create a new pattern and maybe we'll just bump it up, change the variation slider to be really high and then press randomize again, change it in our track. Now, if you wanna add even more range to the randomization, you can do that too. So you can see right now, it's only going from C2 to C3, but we can change this to be like C1 to C4. And now we have all these additional tiles to randomize a pattern with. You can change the octave again. And then if you just want to see the tiles are actually used, you can use this little funnel icon here and narrow it down, super simple, but you can also make this polyphonic too. So let's go back into current and actually change the preset to be something more polyphonic like. I'm just going to go to the favorites and randomize an option here. Let's see what this sounds like. No, I don't like that one. Sounds kind of cool. Okay, let's try that. So let's go back to this. Let's create a new pattern and change this to polyphonic now. So I'm just gonna go and create some chords here. Change the octave. Just 
So a super simple way to get inspiring bass parts, melodic parts, and even chord ideas mixed with melody parts on the spot, and it's built directly into Cubase 15. Okay, this next one was built into Cubase before Cubase 15, and it's something that I love so much. And I'm just gonna add a new track here, and we're gonna go down to Drum here and choose Pattern Event instead of MIDI part, click Add Track. And this is essentially a drum machine built into Cubase. And I love it because it looks so similar to Ableton Live setup with the drum racks and you can choose multiple panes of racks to put your samples in but it's not just samples that you can layer they actually have synthesized drum pieces that you can craft and make on your own and load directly into these drum slots so if i wanted to create my own kick i can literally just click kick then choose the kick that i want so i'll go with kick one and then we have a kick right here in our first pad and there's all these synthesis options for this kick. And one of the main ones I love is this tuning feature that actually tells you the note. So if you're somebody that likes to get super detailed with your tracks and know what key your kick is in or your snare is in, you can tune it on the fly here. So I'll just like tune this up to maybe just a C1. No, that's too much. I'm gonna go back down the other way and just kind of play with this. I like that G, you can change how clicky it is. You want a softer click or transient change the color of it tone amp envelope decay it's really short you can see it adjusting as we change it up here too how much of an accent The distortion is a really nice sounding distortion. Very gritty. Yeah, you can get some really aggressive. Love how it sounds. But then we can go to the next pad and create our own snare. I'm just gonna do a snare two here. This is what it sounds like. I mean, these drum synth pieces really do have a nice sound to them. We can change the oscillator. We can tune it. Bring this also down to like a G as well. See what it sounds like. Maybe up a little bit. Yeah, it sounds really good. You can adjust the noise. How much of a click? Change the amp envelope. Apply some distortion again. Makes it really loud, so I'm actually gonna drag that back down. So we got a kick and a snare here. But then we also have dedicated delay and reverb units that we can play with too, if we wanted to add some of that. So we can just feed it into it right here. Add some reverb, maybe bring this delay down. And this is just applying it to the snare. It's a lot of reverb. Just gonna turn the delay off. So you got these dedicated effects units that you can apply on a per pad basis, but then you can go to the pad effects and add bit crusher, distortion, filter, equalizer. This bit crusher is really nice too. Might sound better on the drums. Get that really nice transformer sound. I mean, these have so much character. I would love to have bit crushers and distortion that sounds like this in every single DAW. Just such a nice flavor. has such attitude to it, I love it. But you can layer multiple samples into these slots as well, or even drum synths. So if you wanted to combine different characters of different drum synth kicks, snares, hi-hats, toms, claps, cymbals, percussion, even samples, anything you want, you have four layers per pad to load up and get super creative with your drums. Now, there's a bunch of presets as well that you can take a look at for a plethora of different styles. We've got boom, bap, down tempo, IDM, house, industrial, lo-fi, minimal, 
Minimal, Soul, Synthwave, Tech House, Techno. I mean, there's just a ton. Trap here, Vaporwave. When it comes down to it, I really like Cubase's approach to the drum rack because it kind of combines Machina's drum synth capabilities with Ableton Live's drum racks, giving you a lot of control over creating your own drums. Anyways, guys, that's just a few of my favorite unique aspects to Cubase. And while some of these are exclusive to Cubase 15, the brand new version, a lot of these tools and features are actually accessible pre-Cubase 15. So if you didn't know about them, take a look, explore and experiment. And if you're interested in Cubase, I'll leave a link for Cubase 15 on Plugin Boutique's website below. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.